Welcome back to the Bobcat Hockey Coaches Show on Super Talk 1270. Paul Tiebel here with you, rejoined in a moment by Bobcats head coach and general manager Lane Sidney, live from the Tap in Tavern on Memorial Highway in Bismarck. And we remind you the Bobcats are at home this weekend. Big home series coming up against the Austin Bruins. Buy and print your tickets online right now at BismarckBobcats.com. And uh, coming up in a second, we've got Tommy Altunian. But first, in our players segment, we're joined by Bobcats. Cats defenseman in his second year out of Blaine High School in Minnesota. Tanner Vecchio with us. Tanner, how's it going, buddy? Uh, not too bad at all, Teeps. How are you? Not too bad either. Just getting through a little bit of a rainy Wednesday here, you know. But uh, first of all, the big news dropped yesterday. Congratulations to you committing to uh, Northern Michigan to uh, play D1 hockey. I mean, that's got to be a great feeling. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. It's it's definitely uh, a big relief, and um, it, it feels great, and I'm, I'm excited about my decision. And uh, what was it when you uh, talked to Northern, when you visited Northern, what did you learn about uh, the Wildcat program uh, from Grant Petulny and Byron Poole and the staff there uh, that really kind of pushed you to say, this is where I want to play? Well, um, I didn't really know too much about Northern Michigan, but when they... When I got out there to see uh, the area, to see the city, I just kind of just kind of fell in love with everything. I mean, I was really comfortable with uh, with the coaches, and I mean, I love the hockey facilities out there, and I just could picture myself myself going out there right away. And I mean, the coaches they've been they've been really great to me, and I mean, I have a I have a great relationship with them, and that's also big part of my decision is i mean how how can i um you know relate and and talk with the coaches am i comfortable with them and and um i mean after just ha having a good relationship with them i mean it was a pretty easy decision for me former bobcat captain philip starzinski is there and your teammate grant johnson committed to go there in a couple years uh did you talk to either of them in the process of making this decision um, not too much. I mean, I'd, I'd ask, uh, um, uh, Grant, uh, I mean, a couple questions here and there, but I mean, I, I, I don't really tell too many people about it, but, um, before I let everyone else know, I, I wanted to make, make sure Grant knew. So I told him before, uh, before I told anyone else, basically. That's awesome. So uh, let's talk about back here out on the ice with the Bombcats. And one of the big things uh, that's been really fun to follow with you over the uh, last couple weeks is that you've been, and Lane Sevy says there's no wings on the power play, but you've been the left winger out there on the power play uh, with Patrick O'Connor and, and Matei Marin and Adam Stocko and Cooper Haar. Uh, what's it been like being a guy up front, being a guy in the corner on that unit? I mean, it's definitely different for me because I'm a defenseman usually. So if I if I were on the power play, I'm usually on, at the top. But now they have me in the corner, so it's a bit of a change, and I had to get used to it at first. But I mean, eventually, I got I'm getting more comfortable with it, and then uh, we've had some success on there. So it's it's been really fun. And, and I imagine that you know being able to hit Stocko and Coop with the passes makes it a little bit easier knowing that they can finish like that. Yeah, yeah, they've definitely uh, been helping me out a little bit with uh, getting into open areas, and I mean, I just have to make a simple pass to them, and, uh, and hopefully they can bury it in there. This weekend, Austin comes to town. Uh, it's largely a different team from last year, but do you still kind of look at these guys as the ones that ended the playoff hopes last year? Yeah, that's that's definitely always going to be in the back of my my mind there. Um, I mean, any anyone we play now, it's it's definitely a going to be a big game. Whether it's it's the team at the top of the division or the team at the bottom, I mean, every team's really good in this league nowadays. So it uh, we're definitely uh, getting well prepared for that, and um, we should be ready for them when they come here. What's something that the defense needs to uh, be aware of uh, with Austin uh, based on what you remember of the guys they have back and what you may have uh, already watched on film? Well, we haven't watched too much film on them yet, but, I mean, I remember they, they usually have some big forwards that uh, like to play a strong, uh, like, power forward game. So, I mean, we just 
we just have to um i mean just keep taking the body and i mean i mean once you take the body and and i mean like stress them out a little bit in the corners it it definitely makes the game easier against those type of teams and it seems like that's kind of been uh, the the name of the game with you and Noah Borm. You guys have been uh, combined out there on the blue line for almost the entire season. Uh, what's it been like uh, playing consistently and uh, getting that uh, familiarity and partnership uh, with Borman so far? Um, so far, I playing with Noah. It's been awesome. I I definitely love it. We we seem to play really well together. We know where we are. And, at every second and i mean we just we're in really good tandem out there together and and um i mean it's it's been fun i think um our strengths and weaknesses work work really well together and and it's it's definitely been fun playing with noah well tanner we thank you very much uh, uh for sharing a little time congrats again on committing to northern michigan and good luck this weekend against austin yeah, thanks, people. Thanks for having me on. All right, that's Bobcats defenseman Tanner Vescio. Our thanks to him, and we remind you the Bobcats are at home this weekend for a big two-game series starting Friday against the Austin Bruins. Buy and print your tickets online right now at BismarckBobcats.com or click Shop Now on our Facebook page as the Bobcats take on the Bruins, the team that ended their playoff hopes a season ago. And a lot of the Bobcats that are back are looking for a measure of revenge against the Bees this weekend. Now we say hello to second-year NAHL Ford and first-year Bobcat Tommy Altunia is with us. Tommy, how's it going, bud? It's going good, Deeps. How are you doing, man? Feeling good. A little bit of a cruddy day, but you know what do you do. It's November in North Dakota. So, first of all, uh, you've uh, been here a couple months now. Uh, get into it. How's your time in Bismarck, Mandan, been uh, since you joined the Bobcats here? Uh, I like Bismarck a lot. It's been uh, pretty good so far. I like the guys around me and everyone in the town, so uh, it's been good so far. My belts are great, so... Right now, the team, uh, seven straight games with points in the standings. Uh, and, uh, things are going really, really super well right now. Uh, what's been the key to uh, getting it going so well? Well, I think we have a really talented team. Honestly, I think we're probably one of the most talented teams in the league, so it's just putting it together. So we start off a little slow there, but then, yeah, we got in our hot streak, so it's just it's just about hard work and effort. I think if we work, outwork teams or work just as hard, we should win just based off our talent. The, the point streak, of course, because the last two games went to overtime, didn't necessarily go the right way for the Bobcats. So looking back at last weekend, uh, what lessons do you guys take from those two games against Minot? Uh, we just got to finish. We got to learn how to win those close games, or maybe we didn't have our best effort. I mean, still feel like we outplayed Minot in both games, but uh, we, we got to learn how to bear down and get those wins, those overtime wins, and uh, look, the sloppy wins at the end, so we got to prove it and show how we can do that. Of late, you've been out there on the line uh, with Dylan Giorgio uh, and Jacob Marty, and your line's been creating great energy. You guys got the goal. You got the goal uh, on Friday in Minot. Uh, what's been the secret for the line doing so well out there over the last few weeks? Yeah, ex exactly. It's just uh, bring bring the energy, uh, bring a spark as the fourth line, just uh banging some bodies just uh finishing our checks and throwing our weight around that's what we got to do and i think even with our skill on that line we're fourth line but we still have some skill and we can still score some goals so yeah just bringing some energy and how big for the the confidence of guys like marty and georgia will it be for them to get their first goals because oh my gosh marty's been so close <laughs> yeah marty's been pretty snake bitten i feel like he's had a bunch of great opportunities but yeah once he gets uh Want the monkey off his back, uh, they'll start pouring in because he's had tons of great opportunities. Now, so, yeah, that'll be huge when they get their first goal. Last year you played in the, the Midwest Division with the Minnesota Magicians, although you had some crossover games uh, against some Central Division teams. Has there been a difference in the way that the divisions play the game between the Midwest and the uh, Central Division that you've noticed so far? Yeah, there really is, to be honest. I think, uh, to be honest, the Central's a little more gritty and physical. But the Midwest might be a little more skilled, but I feel like our team plays almost more of a Midwest style because I feel we're the most skilled team in, the, in our division. All the other teams in our division like to muck it up and grind it up and just uh, play that style of game. So, yeah, I think there is a, a little bit of a difference. Now Austin comes to town this weekend. Uh, what do you guys know about the Bruins here so far? Uh, they're a pretty good team. 
Uh, I think they've, they've gotten a few new guys dropped down from the USHL, so they started off a little slow, but now they're they're doing a little bit better. So we still got we got to play play them like every other team, even though they might not be. Uh, I think I don't think they're in the top four uh, seeds right now, so they're not they're technically not in the playoffs as of right now. But they're still. But, I mean, anyone could beat anyone, so we got to come out and play our game. Now, Tommy, you're a Chicago guy, and I every time I get a Chicago guy on here for the first time, I get to ask him. Where do you go for pizza in Chicago? Who has the best deep dish? The best deep dish is uh, Lou Malnati's for sure. That that seems to be a common trend among a lot of guys. Remember Evan Geisler from Naperville said uh, Lou Malnati's. Is there something about it that just makes it the best? Uh, well, yeah, ex- it's exactly like you said, their deep dish. I think their deep dish is just the best in the world, so no one could beat them. Well, Tommy, we thank you very much uh, for stopping by and sharing a little time. Good luck this weekend against Austin. All right, thanks for having me, teams. All right, that's Bombcats for Tommy Altuni. And stay tuned. Coming up next, we've got a special alumni surprise. Hunter Shepard, Bombcat goaltender from 2014 to 2016 and the current NCHC Goalie of the Week, joins us as the Bombcat Hockey Coach Show rolls along live right here on the radio home of the Bombcats, Super Talk. Welcome back to the Bombcat Hockey Coaches Show on Super Talk 1270. Paul Teeple here with you, rejoined in a moment by Bobcats head coach and general manager Lane Sedevi. But a special alumni treat here this week as we are thrilled to be joined by a former Bobcat goaltender who patrolled the Bobcat net from 2014 to 2016. Hunter Shepard is with us. Shep, how's it going, buddy? Not bad. Uh, Certainly no complaints here. Uh, First of all, hey, man, congrats. Huge weekend in Maine. Uh, You get your first career shutout. You go uh, 53 for 54, I want to say, in net, on the road. Uh, What a huge weekend it was. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. I mean, it was hostile kind of of place to play. I was just kind of a good experience. The team was playing well and playing well in front of me. yeah, and just try something to build on going forward. So, and so far this season, you've been able to uh, step in and, and get more net time. How did you prepare yourself, knowing that you'd have a shot at being the starter this year uh, after playing behind Hunter Miska last year? Uh, I mean, I think for me, it was it was kind of like what it was like coming into my second year at Bismarck, like. I knew there was going to be a chance for a lot more playing time, and uh, I don't know. I got got some coaching this summer. Kind of usually don't skate a ton in the summer, but I, I tried to skate a little bit more this summer than usual, and getting getting good shape and just come in ready. And I think it was I think it was hard. Like the first first couple of games, I mean, you, you didn't really play any games last year. Just the whole like preparation part like getting ready for a game is something that's hard to just like get back when you haven't you haven't done it so I think the thing like it took me a few games to kind of get that back to, to what like my normal routine and what I usually do so I think that was just kind of a showing of, of getting a little more playing time, kind of getting into into a groove, because that's always how I felt, especially at Bismarck. Like the more I, the more I play, I think like the better I play, and I think that kind of showed this weekend after it's my third game in a row. So I think that helped a lot. Now, this is our first time talking to you since uh, last year, so we got to rewind it and go back because uh, your Bulldogs last year, uh, within a game of the national title last year, went all the way to the finals. Uh, I mean, t- t- talk a little bit about the run that you guys had and what it was like being a part of that. Uh, it, was, it was crazy. I mean, it was definitely a, a roller coaster t- type of a ride. At, I mean, not not playing much was is hard because uh like you obviously want to be playing but the team's doing so well it's just they're just kind of like a, f- a fun ride to, to be on regardless uh but yeah i mean you grow up like what like what when you can't ask for much more i mean we're a goal away from like having a national championship ring and it's tough one to, to swallow but I mean, how many guys can say that they're on a team that played in a national championship? It was just kind of a crazy, crazy experience. I, 
honestly, I don't really even think it's sunk in yet, but I was like you know, there and like part of, part of that team in general. It's probably something that I'll be like after my hockey career is over, it'll kind of look back on it. Regardless of like how much I played or not, just kind of a special thing to be a part of a team like that. So. Now you mentioned growing up, and I know because you've told me that you grew up a Gophers <laughs> fan. You get your first start this year, and you get your first win against the Gophers on opening night. What was that feeling like? Uh, I mean, it was. <laughs> I think you can ask for much more than that. I mean, growing up a huge Gopher fan my whole life, and that's definitely a place that I, I wanted to play growing up. And just kind of, I'm glad. I, I'm glad. I'm where I am now because I love it here at UMD so it's kind of nice to kind of get one on those guys so it was awesome experience for me so now because you guys went so far I mean I know you're in the same conference as Denver so they pretty much have the target in the back but do you guys feel that you guys also have that target because the expectations are so high considering how far you went last year yeah yeah I mean you have a year like that and and you kind of you probably beat up on some teams and, and I don't know that's the thing though too is just how good I think the, the program here has been for for a long time now like you, you're always going to have a target on your back uh, it, it's like so tough like it, no matter where you go no matter who you play like whether you go up to Maine or to Colorado College like Every team from there to there is good, and it's tough. It's like tough to win uh, games against like anybody in this league every night. So I don't know. It's just it's it's just tough in general to, to win games. So it's I mean you can't you can't take anybody more lightly than anybody else because anybody can beat anybody. Just like playing in Bismarck in that division, like anybody can beat anybody on any night. So what are the uh, uh, when you look at the the Bulldogs this year. There were a lot of guys that left either earlier because they were on their way out anyways. So uh, when you look at the guys that left, what are the internal expectations? Is it still national championship? Uh, the the expectations in your locker room? Yeah, I mean it's it's kind of got to be like obviously there's like other places like guys on this team could have went. And, and maybe played right away or, uh, I don't know, been closer to home or just other options in general. Like, when you come to a program like this, I mean, that's that's the reason I came here is because, like, you're, like, you want to, like, have a chance to win a national championship. Like, this is probably a place that, that has a chance to do that every year, and that's what you want. And, I mean, you know that from being at Bismarck. Like, it's no different for you guys. Like, your goal is to win the... Central and win the Robertson Cup every year, and I don't, I don't think it's any different for us here. So one thing I, I like to ask our alums, and now that you get to sit in this seat, uh, as opposed to you know the second segment where the, the the current players are, now you're an alum. I want to ask you, well, looking back, what is uh, one of your favorite memories uh, playing here for the Bobcats uh, for a couple years? Uh, I mean, probably, obviously, like winning the Central Division and going to the, the Robertson Cup my last year. Um, that was that was a special team. That's probably one of the fit my favorite teams I've ever played on. Just we had a really old group of guys, and it's kind of a. I mean, we didn't we didn't have a ton of guys that are playing like Division One at this point, but that that team to play on with that many age old guys and and it, and I don't know. Everyone everyone just got along and. Like you were, you were there. You were there for it. I mean, that <laughs> that was probably one of the funnest series of hockey. Just that whole year in general, probably one of the funnest series of hockey I've ever had. Just being a part of a team like that. So, absolutely. Now this weekend for the Dogs, uh, a pretty uh, hefty uh, start to uh, the conference schedule. Uh, Saint Cloud State. You guys are heading down the road to the Herb Brooks Center. Uh, uh, what's the outlook uh, here this weekend against the Huskies? Um. Well, it's Wednesday today, so we'll probably be watching a little video on them today and stuff. But, but I don't know; it's it's pretty similar. I mean, you kind of get in a routine, and you're going to prepare for for everybody. Like, I mean, you, you're not going to prepare prepare differently on a week to week basis, regardless of who you're playing. Because, like I said, like any every team you play is it's going to be a tough game. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, we're just preparing as usual, kind of 
going through it, we go on, on a week to week basis just to get ready for Friday night. So. Well, Hunter, we thank you very much uh, for sharing a little time. Congrats on a great start to your sophomore year, and good luck to you and the dogs the rest of the way. Yep, thanks, Paul. You too. All right, that's Bombcats alumnus Hunter Shepard now with the number eight Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs. We thank him, and we'll jump out for one last commercial break. When we return, the Pucklet Chevrolet three keys to the weekend as the Bombcat Hockey Coaches Show reaches its thrilling conclusion on Super Talk 12.